Gil Hans is the architect of the Olympic Golf Course in Rio. Gil, thank you. Let's talk about these finishing holes, starting with the 16th. Short par four, now when I was down there, uh, this green site was kind of uh, in flux. What ended up happening with this hole and the strategy behind it? Yeah, we're really excited about this hole. I mean, starting at the tee, we've got a nice elevated position, but the ground between tee and sort of landing area is some of the choppiest, mm -hmm. nicest rolling ground we had out there to work with. So I think while most golfers will be playing over it, it'll really kind of throw off the perspective from the tee. Off the tee, you've got out of bounds down the left-hand side, so it shouldn't be a factor for these players. But if we get a heavy wind, you know, the prevailing wind does blow from right to left, so it could be a factor. But you're right, up around the green is really kind of where all the fun starts. So the out of bounds first, when I was there, it was sort of the old uh, shed, <laughs> favela kind of look. What did you end up doing for the OB? Uh, I think that they've, uh, that actually stayed there, but um, what I understand is the security fence has covered that over, and ah. now we have some beautiful Rio graphics okay. there, which will look presentable, although I kind of like the character of the old fence. Yeah, yeah, and then, now, this is the hole where I had kind of hoped strategically you might create a situation where a player actually drove almost past the green to get the best angle because we know they won't like doing that. What ended up happening? I think absolutely that that's the case when the pin is sort of front right. There's a little shelf up along the edge of the bunker where if the pin's there, you want to get past the green because then you're playing right up into the slope. And I think the way this green is shaped, a little hourglass shaped green, knobs front left, front right, and then these kind of wing or appendages for the greens in the back is really going to be interesting to see the position the players get into because if you get out of position around this green you're really going to struggle to get up and down and they will be able to drive it there will be an avenue to actually get it right onto the green yes there's a little slot that goes through there's a big mound just in front of the green a little sort of a turbo boost slot that goes down the left hand side that they can work it up there all right now next hole coming down the stretch is par 317th this was a, a an image that in your presentation and all the articles we've seen about the course uh it was put out there but it ended up probably not looking quite like that uh initial digital image we put together yeah it never does no, i yeah. mean when we get out in the field a lot of stuff changes and so when we were building this golf hole you know uh, neil and the two bends and, and kyle and i and then jim wagner we we just started playing with it but the thing that is consistent is it's kind of an eccentrically shaped green and then as part of the finishing se sequence it's the you know the shortest par three on the golf course so it's, oh. it's a cool little finish i think you know hopefully from the setup standpoint they can move the tees way up and then maybe get the pin on the on the left hand appendage sticking out there and I think, you know, the, the interesting thing about this hole and, and sort of designing in the field is that it turned out when you stand on the tee, it doesn't look anything like it does when you get up on the green. And that wasn't intentional. There was just sort of one of those things that developed hmm. and we're really pretty excited about it. What shape shot does it favor or, or does it just depend on the hole location? Well, it should be into the prevailing wind. I mean, a little bit kind of hurting and off of the, the right. Uh, it, it's going to depend on the hole location. There are okay. going to be some that you're going to want to, you know, and again, being a short hole where these guys are going to try and move the ball, you know, where they're going to be able to actually uh, move a wedge or a nine iron, we'll be able to see. But I think it's, if you get the pin way left, it's going to be a different type of shot. And then there's some really interesting hole locations, uh, sort of back left and then front right. And then in the original design, wasn't it supposed to be longer? Did you actually shorten it in the field? We shortened it a little bit in the field. Okay. We ran into a little bit of a surveying issue as far oh. as the property line is concerned. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that uh, precipitated making it a little bit shorter. All right, the 18th hole, par five finishing hole. Was it always a plan to have a par five and a risk reward hole? We thought that, you know, it's sort of the sequence of finishing up, if we had a kind of an interesting short four, short three, and then a reachable five, that would really get sort of the opportunities for scoring to go. So I think, you know, when we look at championships that are settled, I think it's always fun to have positive outcomes. You know, you know for the true golf fan, you know, sometimes you like to see guys grind it out and work, but you know, just like what we saw at Baltus roll, it's kind yeah. of fun to have birdie or an eagle opportunity to be what wins the tournament. So with that in mind, it's kind of we came up with this uh, finishing sequence. And just give us an idea of the kind of the dynamics and the risks involved with both tee shot and then that person going forward in two. Yeah, it's an inter it'll be interesting to see what the pros think of this tee shot because it's not right in front of you mm. as a lot of them like it's really going to take a little bit of discovery a lot of bunkering out there kind of the tee sits down a little bit low you're playing over some native vegetation to get actually out into the fairway but once you've negotiated that shot it's really i think go zone at that point in time mm -hmm. and the the shot is receptive there's a little mount kind of a kicker slope front left that'll actually feed a ball out onto the surface and then just in front of it's a little bit of an ode to the valley of sin okay, so that's we'll see some of these kind of little interesting up and downs is it 
a Valley of Sin where we could see a shot uh, kind of spin back in it? Uh, and is it, I mean, where, and, and depth wise, are we talking like St. Andrew's Valley of Sin or like Lossy Mouth yeah. <laughs> Valley of Sin, which is three times the depth? Yeah, we're talking about St. Andrew's. Okay. Kind of about head height. And yes, uh, part of the green actually does slope and feed down there. So if you don't get it all the way up into the green, it'll come back down in there. We just thought from a finishing standpoint, if you put professionals in a bunker, you know, it's kind of predictable what they mm -hmm. can do. But from down there, it'll be fun to watch the different club selection and just sort of having to get it up and over that rise and get it to settle near the hole locations should be interesting. And of these three finishing holes, which are you most interested to watch play on? I think 16. I think, you know, you were very involved in discussing that in the field out there. I think we had our best minds kind of working around that and it'll be interesting to see if a lot of that thought process holds true when they play it. Great, great. Well, thank you, Gil. Good luck down there. I'll see you down there. I can't wait to watch uh, golf at the Olympic Golf Course in Rio. Thank you.